What's up guys? My name is uh, Tai Zen. Welcome to the uh, Cryptocurrency.Market channel. Uh, this is a trading, investing, entrepreneurship channel. In this video guys, I want to share with you guys some of the things, just some things that I did not expect. Some of the problems I've been running into in my life that I want to share with you guys because I know that if you guys follow our channel long enough, you guys will end up making the life-changing profits um, that, I, that our team has made. And I'm almost positive that you guys will run into the same uh, problems, the same hurdles, the same obstacles, the same landmines, okay? So for many years, many of you guys know that I came to America as a broke-ass, poor-ass Vietnamese refugee. Came to America, very poor, no education. My family had no education, no capital, no friends, no family, nothing. Uh, we were very poor. We grew up in a, we lived in a poor ghetto black neighborhood. I got involved in drugs with my black friends and ended up in uh, federal prison for nearly 14 years uh, from the time I was a teenager to the time I was near my mid-30s. And then when I got out uh, in my mid-30s, you know, I learned how to trade and invest my money. And then 11 years later, uh, in my mid-40s, I was able to retire. And here I is, you know, next month I'll be 49 years old and uh, I'm broadcasting from uh, Ho Chi Minh City uh, in Vietnam, in Southeast Asia, uh, in District 7 right now, okay? So here I am. And so when I retired, you know, thanks to uh, my trading, right, I thought that I would be able to live a good life, which I do. You know, I'm living the life of freedom that I've always wanted. Uh, I hate going to a nine to five job and being confined to one location or one time schedule. Uh, nothing drives me more nuts than, you know, uh, um, having to clock in, having to do the same damn thing every day, right? And right now, and some of you guys that may have worked with me or been my coworker in the past, if you watch this, you might say, well, you know, Ty, you were always on time. You were very diligent at work. You were hard, working hard, you know? Uh, I'm surprised to hear you say that you hate all that, right? And yeah, uh, the, the fact is, just because I show up on time for work and I like to be a responsible employee and things like that, that doesn't mean I actually liked what I was doing, right? So uh, I hate, being stuck to one location for a job. I hate being stuck to one uh, set clock or time schedule, right? And you know, there was a few places I worked at where my boss would really screw with me and jack with me and mess with me about not being on time and stupid nonsense like that. You know, fortunately, you know, I'm free from the location dependency and I'm free from the time dependency, you know. Uh, unfortunate for the bosses that I told that were being an asshole to me, that I told to get into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and they were laughing at me back then. Uh, right now, they're laughing in tears because they should have done it and be retired like I am right now. But anyways, um, just I'm gonna run off just a random list of stuff that I did not anticipate uh, when uh, I retired, okay? <laughs> and how I dealt with it. And some of the problems I ran into, uh, I didn't know how to deal with it, so I'm still trying to figure it out. And maybe if you guys have an answer, I'd love to hear it from you guys, right? Um, just uh, no order of importance. I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, right? One of the things that really um, surprised me was that I've been wearing tennis shoes and dress shoes for so long, for 40 something years of my life. You know, I didn't retire until my mid 40s. So I was wearing shoes for like, you know, 45 years. So when I retired, um, I don't like to wear shoes. I like to wear sandals, right? Um, I like to wear flip-flops so my feet can air out and just be able to, my, I like to have my toes enjoy the air and everything, I don't like that hot, sweaty feet and stuff like that. And after about a month, I had to go somewhere, or, or after a few weeks, I had to go somewhere and I put them on my tennis shoes. And it was the same tennis shoes I've been wearing comfortably for months already. And I noticed that when I put the tennis shoes on, man, it hurt my foot. It really, really hurt my foot, my toes. I felt like my foot was like scrunched together right and I came home and my foot was like hurting for like a day or two and I was like what the hell's going on so I went back to wearing my sandals right I was like what's wrong with these shoes like why are they so tight okay uh, these are shoes I've been working you know I've been wearing for several months now before I retired so why, why would they hurt now I didn't think nothing of it you know my feet stopped hurting several days later then I had to go somewhere I put my shoes on again right I come back and then, you know, I wake up in the morning and my feet was like killing me. My, 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 I, it felt like I'd been like 
wrapped, my foot was wrapped like those Chinese women, how they wrapped their feet back in the emperor days. And I'm like, crap, what's wrong with my feet? It didn't, it wasn't until like the third time that I realized that the pain was coming from my shoes, right? I've been wearing shoes for so long throughout my whole life that I did not realize it was scrunching my feet. So I had been so used to it for so long that it never hurt because the pain was almost there every day. And I guess the chemicals in my body, the painkillers were putting it, so I never felt it. But now that I hadn't been wearing shoes and scrunching my toes and my feet together for several weeks and just wearing sandals, I realized now the difference it made, you know? And I, and I looked at my feet and I go, man, I can't believe that I was, I was hurting my feet like that, you know? My poor feet that carries me around, my toes, you know, that carry me around every day of my life. I couldn't believe that I was wearing those dress shoes and those tennis shoes to, to scrunch my feet in just to look appropriate for work or do all that stuff. So I said to myself, I will never hurt my own toes like that again. And I know that this is, yeah, I, I know what you guys are thinking. Like this might sound like the craziest shit you've ever heard on a cryptocurrency channel, a guy, a trader talking about his toes, okay? But I invite you guys to consider, man, like um, if you're out there wearing dress shoes and stuff, you know, if you have to wear it, uh, invest in a decent pair, uh, a decent pair that's soft and that's nice on your toes, man. Don't, don't damage your toes. You may not even be aware of it because you're so used to the pain for so long that you may not be aware that you're doing that kind of damage to your toes, okay? So uh, my toes are very thankful to me right now. My feet are very thankful for me right now that I'm not scrunching them together and I'm letting them, you know, hang loose and naturally, okay? So that's just, a, just one random freaking thing that I did not expect after I retired from making life-changing profits in crypto, okay? The, another thing that I did not um, anticipate was that when um, I retired, right, uh, when I was working a nine to five job, when I, I say nine to five, but it was really nine to nine, uh, it was more like it, right? When I was working my nine to nine job, right, I was gone most of the time, I was flying around to different cities to teach people how to trade and coach them how to trade stocks, Forex futures, you know. Um, I was also flying around the country selling stock trading classes and things like that. And I was gone for most of the time. So I didn't spend a lot of time with my wife because I was wanting to be around all these good traders so I can learn from them, right? It was the opportunity of a lifetime for me to be on this traveling, traveling job, be able to go to New York, you know, almost every month and, and, and live there and work there and, and, and learn from the traders up there. Right, and just from traders in LA, traders in Miami, traders in uh, 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 you know Orlando, traders in Tampa, traders in Salt Lake City, in Las Vegas. So I was very, very grateful to be able to travel like that and help other traders, and then also learn at the same time. But one thing that I did not anticipate, and I didn't realize, is that I was gone away from my wife for like you know most of the week, most of the month, and now that I'm retired, I'm with her every day. So little knickknacks, little things that that did not seem to be a big problem before, right? It, it would like, now it's like very recurring every day. Like, I'll give you guys an example. Like, uh, for example, like, um, you know, before when my wife and I would go out, you know, um, the few times that we did go out while I was working a nine to nine job, right? Um, there would be other girls that come around and say something or something like that. She would get jealous, right? And it wasn't a really big deal right? Because I know that all girls get jealous. And this is something that, yeah, she got jealous, no big deal. Next day, I was gone for work. And it's not really a big deal because I don't have to experience her uh, 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 being upset about other girls being around. And when I say other girls being around, guys, I'm not saying like, this is my uh, 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 girlfriend or like a side girlfriend or uh, a second wife or a third wife or some dumb shit like that, okay? I'm just talking about like, when I go and interact with other people, you know, in America, you know, I like to be courteous. I like to be, you know, uh, uh, um, when we sit down at a table, if I'm out with my friend and, you know, with um, other couples and stuff, you know, I'll talk to everybody. I, I just don't focus on just talking to one person, right? And making the other people feel left out of the conversation. So things like that will get my wife jealous, right? So um, if I try to help somebody, uh, 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 even if it's just a young girl, you know, like with some, they fall or something or just help them. Just, just, just courteous gentleman stuff. Like my wife would get upset, 
You know, like, what the fuck are you, you know, touching that girl for? Or, what are you looking at her for? Or, what are you talking to her for? Just stupid shit like that, right? Which I never thought was a big deal, but then when I retired, and we're together all the time now, and we go out and shop and, you know, go to different places all the time now, now that's like amplified like a hundred times, you know, because now I'm spending more time with my wife and kids, right? So it's like, man, like this is really amplified. So I'm trying to get like different things to uh, help my uh, wife like reduce her jealousy and everything you know but uh but uh it's still a huge challenge for me because i don't know how to deal with it i've spent all my life you know trying to learn how to make money learn how to become a better trader uh, i don't think i ever spent one minute of my life ever trying to figure out how to you know help my wife or my uh, uh, uh someone that i care about you know to reduce their jealousy you know she the in if you're wondering why she's jealous you know i mean it's obvious you know she sees me i'm a successful dude you know, I'm a, you know, multi-millionaire and I'm uh, out there, you know, uh, way to retire young. My wife's never had to work since she's started dating me, right? And for someone that's in my shoes, right? And she don't see any of her other friends living the life that she's living, right? So because of that, you know, obviously she's, uh, she doesn't want other girls to try to come in and try to steal her husband or something or steal me away from her. So I can understand that, you know, but some of this shit, you know, it's a, uh, it's a pain in the ass, it's annoying sometimes. Uh, it may not seem like a big deal, but for me, I, I feel like you know, my trading skills have been reduced probably by about 40, 50, 60% because of this ongoing jealousy issue with uh, my wife at home. And it's, it's really annoying, you know? So it's a really, uh, uh, what do you call that? A, um, a, uh, a uh, what do you call that? Uh, it's, a, it's a huge uh, drain from me mentally um, uh, uh, being able to trade at 100% capacity. So that's, that's one thing. Uh, now on the other thing, another th issue that I did not in anticipate was that when I retired, I only had two kids. And it's not a really a big deal. Uh, but then when I had my, uh, uh, after I retired, we had a third child, uh, Austin, okay? And he's about 10 months old right now. And man, like I got a seven-year-old, a six-year-old, and I got a 10 month old. Like, it is non-stop. Like, I gotta feed this kid, I gotta feed that kid, and then, you know, I gotta, uh, 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 you know, this one's crying, I gotta clean his butt, and then the other one's peeing, I gotta take him to the restroom, the other one needs to shower, the other one needs to exercise, this one, you know, is not pronouncing the words correctly that in the book that they're reading, and my God, I am, like, sometimes I think, like, am I working harder now, or am I working, was I working harder when I was working in a nine to five job? or am I working harder now that I'm retired, right? And, and it's almost certain that I am working harder now with just my wife and kids than, than, than I was when I was working a regular nine to, five jo uh, nine to nine job, okay? So that's something that I did not anticipate is that being at the house with the kids and we homeschool our kids. I don't want my kids going to school and getting fed all that dumb shit and all that negative shit from school and destroying their future. So I'm you know, hiring tutors to come home and tutor the kids in the things that I want them to learn, right? So because of that, I see them all day and, and they're just constantly needing this, 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 and that, and that. So that also um, impedes and reduces my ability to focus on making money in, in, in the cryptocurrency market and with my business. Something, another thing that um, I did not anticipate is that now that I'm at home all the time, right, uh, with my kids, my three kids, they, they're like tag team. They tag team because they see me at home all the time. They pretty much tag team each other and, 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 and take turns interrupting me. So while I'm trying to focus on my technical analysis, I'm focusing on my risk management, I'm focusing on analyzing charts, I'm focusing on, on trying to look at uh, coins, right? One, the, the, the seven-year-old would come over and ask for a cookie. Uh, after that, the six-year-old would, it's her turn now, and she would come over and, you know, talk about, you know, um, uh, uh, she just uh, peed in her pants or something, or she just dropped food on her dress or something, and uh, she wants me to help her get some new pants or new dress so she can change, right? And then when she's done, right, then it's uh, the 10-year-old son, you know? Um, I don't know why, but my uh, third child, uh, uh, his name is Austin, and when this guy needs milk or he needs to change his diapers or he needs to poop or something, he is screaming at the top of his lungs 
like somebody's trying to stab him to death or something, right? Uh, I mean, this guy is just, ah, he is screaming and yelling and crying at the top of his lungs. And then when you give him the milk or the, whatever it is he wants, then he just stops, right? <laughs> I just can't believe how loud this little critter is, okay? So all these things, man, it is driving me nuts at the house. Like when I was uh, uh, um, in prison, you know, I spent like six years doing Zen meditation to calm my mind. And I would say that the Thai Zen in 2006, when, when, when I came out of prison near the end of 2006, was like at 100% capacity, at 100% peak performance, you know, uh, human-wise. I would say that uh, 10 years, you know, 11 years later, I was probably operating at like 60 or 70% capacity at per, at, at, from my peak performance level, uh, just because of the kids and everything. And then after I retired from crypto, you would think that my, my mental and, and just overall ties in performance would be at a higher level. And for some ungodly reason, it's actually gone down. It's actually, I'm, I'm probably operating at like 30, 35, 40% capacity right now. Like, I'm very, very disappointed with myself because I know that I, I'm capable of doing much more. I'm much more productive. Like, the things that I do today that I can get done in a month, that takes me a month to do, I can get it done in like a day or two when I was in the last year of my prison sentence when I had done a lot of Zen meditation training and my mind was very mentally clear and I can stay focused. Nowadays, like every day, I'm, my, 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 my seven-year-old is pulling me this way, my wife is pulling me this way, my six-year-old is pulling me this way, the 10-month-old is pulling me this way. And now, right, here's the bonus, guys. Here's the bonus, right? You guys ready for this, right? So uh, this is, I think, the first time I publicly announced this, but my wife is pregnant for our fourth child right now. And she's about, I think, like, uh, two, two and a half months pregnant right now. So we're expecting our child in uh, April, I think, of 2020. So that's our fourth child, right? And now my wife, she's not able to take care of the other three kids. And so it's like me taking care of my wife now and my uh, three kids, right? Because of her pregnancy. And it has been hell, guys. It has been hell. Like, if, if like, sometimes, like, I just get away just to make these videos just so that... I can have some peace and quiet to myself. Uh, it's probably why I've been making uh, uh, more of these videos lately. Simply, it's just, I just need to get away from the whole family just to have some, some solitude to myself and, 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 and just go through some of my thoughts and some of my uh, uh, things that's going on in my head, okay? So, um, what else? Oh, the other thing too is that this is, this is something else I didn't anticipate, right? I didn't anticipate that that having a big portfolio required so much of my time. You know, when, when I was only trading a five, 10, 20, 30, $100,000 account, it's very easy to manage and very easy to trade it. But whenever you get, start getting into the seven, eight, nine figure portfolios, something I've noticed between myself, my teammates and my uh, clients, right? Is that it takes a lot more time than anyone could have imagined. Like for me and Leon, just managing our portfolios is pretty much a full-time job in itself like it's not you would think oh you just do it and you know we got to calculate when we rebalance our portfolios we got to calculate how much you know risk we have in each coin and that's something that's ongoing that's why we're building the software to help reduce the workload here you know and i'm happy to say that the software is coming along you know uh well and that it's uh you know um it's able to reduce you know, like a month's worth of workload into just a few minutes for me. Uh, I'm not kidding, you know. So uh, hopefully we get it out soon so that we can share it with you guys so that you guys can use it too and reduce the workload for you guys also, all right? So what else? Um, oh, the eating, eating, okay? You know, we always have this fantasy that, hey, when we make a gazillion dollars, you know, <laughs> we, uh, we, we drive, uh, you know, fancy cars and we eat, you know, lobsters and, and uh, shrimp and lobsters every day, right? Um, I moved back to Vietnam and it's like an all seafood nation, right? They got the longest, probably, it's one of the few countries in the world that has the longest coastline. So we get plenty of seafood here. So although, you know, shrimp and lobsters were extremely expensive in America, right? Over here, uh, some of the big shrimp and lobsters, they're expensive, but they're not that uh, expensive. And 
over here, it pretty much, I can just pretty much eat whatever I want, you know? And it's weird because now I just, you know, the more money that I make, the more I just want to eat just to have energy and be healthy. Um, I really don't care about like eating like out and having fancy, you know, being able to brag to people that I eat fancy steaks or shrimp or lobster or anything like that. And so that's something else, you know, like when, when I was poor, I was imagining that when I make money and become a millionaire or something, I would eat all this fancy food, you know, but then when I did finally make the money that I want, it's like, it's not really a big deal. Same thing goes with cars, right? Um, same thing goes with cars. Um, I, I thought that Leon and I thought that we would um, uh, go and get a Ferrari and each of us get a Ferrari, a Lambo and a McLaren for all three of us, uh, for the three business partners. Each of us, one would have a Ferrari, another one would have a McLaren, another one would have a Lambo. And then we come to find out, you know, like, damn it, you know, like, we thought we wanted this, but apparently we don't, you know. We go look at it, we shop for it, we look at the styles, the, the model of cars we want, and it's like, man. And now I'm in District 7, Ho Chi Minh City. And I can't believe how cheap the taxis and the grabs uh, uh, rides are. Um, so the equivalent of Uber in Vietnam is called Grab like you're grabbing something with your hand. So it's a, uh, the Grab uh, ride sharing app. Um, and over here, it's like, the lo I could get a Grab ride for like an hour and a half. And it's like, uh, how much is it? It's like, um, it's like 12 bucks. That's like the absolute, uh, uh, that, that would be the equivalent of driving like um, uh, from New Jersey all the way to the end of uh, Long Island for 12 bucks or it'd be the equivalent of driving like from Beverly Hills down to like um, Irvine, California or to Laguna Beach for 12 bucks, right? It's, it's so cheap here. Like I, I use the ride sharing uh, grab uh, app like every, uh, almost every day. And it's like a dollar, a dollar 50. Like, it's so cheap that it's not even worth thinking about. It's not even worth, uh, buying a car. I don't even own a motorcycle or any kind of uh, 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 mechanized transportation right now because the, the ride sharing uh, services in Vietnam and in uh, Thailand are so, so cheap. Like if you come over here guys to live over here, you don't even have to consider buying a car. Like if you buy, if you live in one of the luxury apartment complexes like I do in District 7, it's like a thousand bucks a month. You know, I live across the street from a massive shopping center and pretty much 90% of the, the, of the things that I need to do, buy, eat, or, 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 or need for my life is right across the street. I just walk across the street. And if you don't like walking across the street and playing Frogger with, you know, a thousand uh, scooters and cars trying to hit you, then you can just go to District 2. There's a few places over there. Uh, like one is called the Estella Heights. You can rent a place over there for like thirteen, fourteen hundred uh, dollars a month. Uh, it's a little bit, um, a little bit more upscale than this one, and they're right above a massive shopping center, shopping mall, and you don't even have to even leave the building. Like you just go down the elevator and go. So if I, uh, my, I plan on relocating my family from Ho Chi Minh City uh, to the beach city of Da Nang, which is in central uh, Vietnam. Looking forward to doing that within the next uh, one to two months um, before the end of uh, 2019. So hopefully I start 2020 uh, broadcasting from the beaches of Da Nang, okay, instead of the concrete jungle here in Ho Chi Minh City, right? Uh, so I came down to Ho Chi Minh City to take care of my little brother, uh, take care of my mom and my, uh, 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 help my little brother's business, but neither one of them uh, want my help. So I'm just gonna go ahead and live the, the life that I wanna live, okay? So, and that's why I'm gonna move to uh, the beach city of Da Nang. It's like a combination of Miami combined with, uh, it's kinda like Miami and San Diego uh, combined with the uh, beautiful beaches of Tampa combined with the city lights of Las Vegas. So it's, it's ungodly, magnificently beautiful. It has mountains, rivers, hills, everything that you could possibly want in, in a magnificently beautiful city. And it's the most advanced and uh, uh, technologically advanced city uh, in Vietnam. So it's like considered the smart city. And it's like the, 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 at the forefront of, uh, of city development in Vietnam. So that's where I want to be. Um, anyways, uh, what else? Um, so no shoes, no cars, right? Uh, no fancy, smancy food right, that I need to uh, do. Now, I will do something here. I liked the fruit 
in Vietnam. The fruit in Vietnam is magnificent. It's, it's amazing, okay? The, the, the mangoes over here, dude, they're like the size of American watermelons. And like some of them, oh my God, they're so good when they're ripe. They are so delicious. Like, like some of these red mangoes that they have. I've never even seen a red mango before until I came to Vietnam, right? They're so beautiful looking mangoes. Like one of these days, I'll grab one and just eat it while I'm making a video and I'll have you guys mouth watering and want to move to Vietnam because of it, right? But anyways, um, some of the exotic fruit that they have here in Vietnam is just, it's just amazing, amazing guys, right? Uh, if you guys ever have a chance, I would highly recommend you guys come and check out, you know, uh, Vietnam. It's an emerging market, uh, magnificently beautiful country, guys. Don't even worry about crime or violence when you get here, guys. Don't, the only thing you have to worry about Right, if somebody trying, you know, like a pickpocket trying to steal your phone, that's it. That's, that's all they steal here is like your phone. Okay, so uh, just be careful, put your phone in your pocket and you're pretty much good to go or put it in your backpack, right? And cost of living here is outrageously, outrageously low. I don't, I don't care what, what anybody says, guys. You get the quality of life that you get for the low cost uh, here. If you're one of those digital nomads, if you're one of those uh, cryptocurrency traders that you wanna, you know, you're not sure if you can retire in America, like you only have enough money to retire in America or a Western country, uh, you can take that same money and come over here to uh, uh, Vietnam and you can retire for like five years with that same amount of money that you can live off of in, a, in, in America for one year, okay? So um, right now my, my uh, cost of living in Vietnam is like from six, uh, it, was, it went from like $6,000 a month in, in Dallas, Texas, down to like around like somewhere below 2,000, just above 2,000 uh, each month, depending upon what I need to do that month, okay? So if you're a single guy, like I don't see any reason why you need to spend more than maybe 1,000 or $1,200 a month. Like if you put yourself in a single bedroom, a nice really like mid-end to high-end apartment, it's somewhere between six to eight hundred dollars, uh, no, between five to eight hundred dollars, right? And you're in a good place, you're in a good neighborhood. As far as like crime goes, guys, you don't even have to worry about that. That that is so, it's almost non-existent in, in in Asia. Like they don't have that concept of violence like in America. Like you got those dumbass black guys that go around and punch people in the face and stupid shit like that. Or you got, you know, the, 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 that macho attitude in, 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 in America where, you know, guys always want to fight each other and stuff, you know, to settle an argument or a debate or a discussion. That does not exist in Asia, guys, because over here, it's a Confucian society. They believe in education. They believe in being educated and, and fighting and, and, and having a loud voice or a, a, even even the volume at which I speak is considered uh, very uneducated. So the people over here, they're soft-spoken, the, the educated, the college graduates guys are soft-spoken, they're well-mannered, they don't, like, there, there's no physical violence over here, guys. Like, that is not, like, if you see videos of people, like, getting stabbed or getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, get into a gang fight, that, that's like gangs and they're just trying to collect money from people that they owe, okay? That's not, like regular people, they don't go mess with that. That's like, that's like unheard of, like, uh, um, that, that's unheard of. Like, if, if there's like violence anywhere in the city here in Asia, the way that it works over here is that the police chiefs, right, they, they don't go and rough people up. What they do is they have very close ties with like the black societies and the underground, like, gangs and stuff and like they usually make friends with them and they'll send somebody from the, the mob or the gang to go and take care of that and beat the crap out of you and, and physically make you disappear if you try to create violence around here. So just, just, just I would not worry about that. Like uh, the, there's, there's, uh, uh, there may, you might see poor people, but you won't see violence here, guys. There's they, just, you know, uh, it's just a society where everybody's happy and, and they're content where they're at in life, you know? So they're not trying to go out there and hurt people to steal or do any of that stuff, okay? They'll pickpocket, and usually it's for a phone. Uh, that's like the most common thing that I have heard of, okay? I've not seen it with my eyes, but I, that's like the most common thing that I've heard of. But anyways, um, back to what I was saying. Um, great place, great country, if you guys, that's something else that I didn't expect either, is that I didn't expect that, you know, I had to come back to Vietnam to take care of my uh, 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 sick mom, but, you know, when she saw me, she was happy and, you know, me sending her money each month, uh, giving her money each month, um, she's happy as shit and she don't, she'd rather stay in the village where we live in and she doesn't want to come to the big city and live with me. So that's why 
you know, uh, uh, there's no need for me to be in Ho Chi Minh City anymore. So that's why I'm moving to the beach sea of Da Nang. Okay. Um, what else? Um, oh, the other thing too is that I did not expect this. When I was working nine to nine every day in uh, uh, my day job, you know, I was always aware of the clock. I was always aware of today's Monday, I was always aware that today's Tuesday or Wednesday, the days of the week and the time of days. And then what happened was when I retired, right, something strange happened was that I was not confined to a, um, a uh, set schedule no more. I just do everything on my own terms. And I remember for many years, uh, for the six years that I was studying and practicing Zen meditation, I remember the Buddha saying that, you know, time is a human construct, that time is something that humans created that nature does not have time. There's no concept of time in nature, right? So, you know, the days going by, the years going by, that's just a human construct that we created in our human mind. And it used to blow me away. And, I, and he says that when, when you finally let go of the ego, you let go of that, that mind that's in here uh, through Zen meditation, then you will no longer see that time is a part of nature. That's something that humans created, right? So. I never, it was really hard for me to understand that. Now I experienced that because I would sit there and meditate for half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the evening. And I would notice that I would close my eyes and, and meditate. And when I opened my eyes and meditate, when the alarm went off, it felt like it was only one or two minutes. You know, some people might say, well, how did you sit there for 30 minutes and sit still and meditate? And I would say, it didn't feel like it. It was only like a couple of minutes, right? And the Buddha kept saying that, 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 when you are in the, uh, when you're doing the meditation correctly, the 30 minutes or one hour that you sit in meditation never feels like it because that is a human construct. And now I understand why those monks were able to sit there for an hour, two hours, three hours and meditate with no problem and they didn't feel bored or anything like that because it, that was something they never, time was not something that they experienced. So now back to what I was saying, I, now that I'm retired and I can just go do whatever I want, I noticed that almost every day, I never know what time, what day it is or what time it is. So sometimes I'll go and interact with people and when they ask me, hey, uh, you know, can, uh, how about, and I would tell them, hey, how about we just meet up tomorrow? And they're like, I can't, tomorrow's a work day. And I'm like, well, oh really? And they're like, yeah, tomorrow's a Monday. I'm like, oh shit, today's Sunday? And I'm like, uh, I didn't even realize that because I don't realize, like my wife and I, we really don't, there's nothing that we do now has a time function in it, right? So I wear this, you know, Breitling watch, uh, the Super Ocean here, right? Uh, just, you know, just just for a, a nice, you know, a dress piece, right? Um, I've always wanted to wear a nice watch, you know. So I just got this Breitling uh, Super Ocean, and that, that's uh, that's uh, that's it. That, that's that's the only thing that I look at that tells me time. And then whenever ask, people ask me what time it is or what day it is, I'll look at my uh, clock here on the, the phone. But other than that, I, I have no concept of time. Like if you guys reach out to me and you're wondering why, you know, like I get back to you like in the middle of the night or in the middle of the week or anything like that, just be aware that once you are no longer confined to a day job, the concept of time goes away, okay? Um, wow, my portfolio went up. Uh, over 5% today, that's awesome, right? Tezos is up to 90 cents, guys. Tezos is up to 90 cents. Cosmos is up to 3.74 cents, right? That's awesome. Ooh, Bitcoin Cash, look at that. 291, 291, right? Boy, I can't wait to get Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV to make a killing, right? I'm gonna rip these Bitcoin maximalist retards a new, a new one once Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV comes up, and it's gonna kill them. It's gonna kill them. These retards, they can't face reality, you know. I recently posted a, uh, a screenshot of a uh, Bitcoin traction, transaction that took over 10 hours to confirm. And man, that was probably the most, most commented, most liked, most retweeted, and most trolling tweet I ever got this entire year of 2019, right? These Bitcoin maximalist retards, they just come out of the woodworks Whenever I say something, you know, I comment on, you know, something taking too long in Bitcoin uh, Core's uh, network, right? And, you know, they all tell me that, oh, you know, quit being so cheap. You know, I only paid one Satoshi per byte of data. So I paid the absolute cheapest rate that fee that I could possibly pay, right, to make that Bitcoin transaction. And what's funny about it was that 
uh, <laughs> what's funny about it was that uh, I, uh, I, uh, I did not uh, 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 tell everyone that that was not my transaction. It was actually a company that only accepts Bitcoin that sent me that transaction. So to you, all you dumbass Bitcoin maximus retards that's being a cancer to the cryptocurrency community, you know what? Who's, last, who's laughing last now? For all that time that you guys were saying that I was being cheap to send a Bitcoin transaction with the lowest transaction fee, right? What are you gonna say now when that Bitcoin transaction was done by a Bitcoin only company? Huh? You retards. Okay, anyways guys, right? Uh, just wanted to just share with you guys uh, you know, you guys know that this is a, uh, a reality-based uh, channel, you know, where we talk about the real things that, uh, that help you us make, you know, life-changing profits uh, in trading, investing, and entrepreneurship. So I just wanted to share with you guys those, just a few of those things that I just really did not expect, right? Uh, right now, uh, I don't even focus on, like, you know, the system that we have set up, it's going to make us money um, so we don't have to, uh, you know, worry about it too much and most of the time that I'm spending on is building software to help automate a lot of the stuff that we're doing and then the, the, the majority of my time is just being focused on like okay I made, I made all this money but now do I have the quality of life that I actually want and that's something that I invite you guys to ask yourself like do you have the quality of life that you want in your life right now for me there's still like I'm not living in the city that I want, you know, so hopefully in the next month or so I'm living near the beach like I want, then I'll be living in the city that I want, and then uh, that'll be one step closer to the, the life that I want to live, okay? And I invite you guys to, 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 to look at what you guys are doing, right? And ask yourself, is there anything that I can do to increase the quality of my life and, and do those things uh, that can, can better my current life situation? And, uh, you know, and sometimes it could, could just be you know, moving to a new place, moving to a new apartment, moving to a new neighborhood, moving to a new city. That alone, without even making any more money, that could increase your quality of life. So just always consider that, guys, that we're making this money to increase our quality of life. It's not just to make the money for nothing, okay? So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you're interested in learning how uh, me and my team, you know, were able to trade and invest in cryptocurrencies and be able to retire early uh, uh, from it, you know, uh, go get a copy of the Cryptocurrency Investing Blueprint at our website www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint and follow me on twitter at hey tai zen and i'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future video and i hope that this video where i share with you guys some of the obstacles the the that i didn't expect to face when i retired from crypto uh it'll help you guys anticipate this and avoid it in the future all right uh thanks for watching this video guys and i'll see you guys in a future video